Good afternoon, students. Um, today we are going to look at assessment three. This is for teaching practice for be at foundation phase. And we are sharing this today on the 13th March 2024. I am your lecturer, um, Dr. Manyaga for TPF 3704. And then general rules for submitting assessment, assign assessments, uh, I should have said assessments, not assignment, portfolios for teaching practice. Please note that the only mode of submission is online. Do not say, ma'am, I, I wasn't able to submit in time. Can I send um, uh, uh, this on my, on my, uh, on my, on, on your email? I have worked very hard. We know you have worked very, very hard and we do not dispute that, but you must also adhere to the requirements. You must submit your assessment for teaching pr practice as soon as you have completed your five weeks. If you are doing blocks, you have done two weeks, please make sure that after finishing Portfolio 50, submit it, prepare it and submit it. That will, will take off even the stress that you have, or maybe you might even realize, you know, I've made a mistake here, and I've, 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 I've forgotten a, a register. You are able to send an email. Ma'am, I think I forgot the register. Can you open the system and allow me to resubmit? If we allow you to resubmit, you submit the whole document. Don't try to submit the register because it's going to cancel the whole portfolio and you only have a register. We do have students that only have a register and they want to claim that it's not their mistake, it's the system that only took the register. The system, the system is a robot. You put in your student number, you load what is on your desk. The system won't go and search on, on what you saved and said, I'm taking that one. That's not how it works. We've been doing this for a long time. I know when you are frustrated, you think someone, someone has swapped your work, it's not like that. Also remember the following, when you submit online, Complete the general student information page. I told you there that there you just get marks for free. Write clearly if you are handwriting. And if you are typing, it's okay. This year I'm going to allow typing. And it's because some of the scripts were just a problem. We could even see what the student has written. And some of them ended up being corrupt. But if you write clearly and, you, and scan properly using the usual scans, it will be able to come through. Save the file as your student number, your surname, module code, assign number, assignment number, to ensure that you upload the correct file. If you don't save it properly, you would be trying to submit a portfolio and then you submit assessment two, or you want to submit portfolio 51, but you submit a, a portfolio 50, like, just like in any exam, if you do that, we do not mark. Submit your portfolio correctly under the correct assignment number. Ensure that you have the correct content in your assessment. Now I'm going to talk about, I spoke about the actual templates that you're going to find. You are going to find as a, a general student information. I suggest that you start working from here. There's no need for you to attach the first part of the assessments where there are, um, there are instructions. Just start here so that you do not exceed the required megabytes. Then you write your student number, your student name and say name, student number, postal address, email, use my life email, don't lose marks unnecessary contact details and you answer these questions, you sign, you sign, and then you know you are done with your information. Here is the declaration. I'll always refer to what we get. We usually give students zero here because students do not tick. You can see there are that you need to fill in here. When you fill in here, you say you declare that portfolio 50 is my own work and I take note of the following examination rules. By completing here, you agree this to this examination rules. If you leave it like that, it's more like you didn't complete your 
declaration. Also, that needs your name and signature. This one is also compulsory because here, this one is an academic honesty. Honesty, which is, we are saying, uh, this is, you are saying you did not plagiarize for all written assignments, and then you make sure that you attach this form in front of the ass assessment. It's not a, 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 a train smash because these are already prepared for you in the template. The purpose of this declaration form is to ensure the authenticity, whether you are true, we are telling the truth, and what you are saying is legitimate for each written assignment. Now, you declare as a student, you sign, you get a somebody as a witness to sign for you. This is the attendance register. This is a make or break. As I said, without the attendance register, we do not mark your portfolio completely. The first one is the student information, the name of school address, cell phone number, email address. Though it's written student uh, information, what we need is your, your, your name, but here is the information of the school where you went. Complete this portion. I don't understand why we, we, we like microwave um results take your time you write the date in full if it's the 13th of april 2024 write it like that don't leave the year if you leave the day the year this is nullified or you just say 04 2024 it's nullified then here i know i've written grade three but it helps to also complete just complete any space sign here and let your mentor sign here. Your mentor might be the person who's responsible for all your teaching practice or the teacher in the class who's responsible for class where you are teaching because they're mentoring you at that time. If you spend that week in grade R, you are being mentored by the grade R teacher. So it's not a problem if we see different signatures. It even authenticates that you went to different classes because it's not one, it's in foundation phase. It's not one teacher would be teaching grade um, uh, R and even grade uh, uh, one. It's one teacher for each grade. This is very important. As I say, some students uh, will just uh, complete that register and leave this important part. If you go through your portfolio, you realize that there's no way where we have the signature of the principal and also the date and the school stamp. So this is a make or break for us. Even if you submit a register, but there's no school stamp and the signature of the principal or mentor, we doubt. We don't, we are not sure if you really went to school or you just wrote these portfolios at home. Now, here's the lesson template. I said to you, I won't be able to do all the work that we are supposed to do in Portfolio 50 because I would like to set up also a Microsoft Teams meeting. I know not many of you um, uh, respond to it, but it's very important because that will be interactive, where we'll be able to ask questions, where I'll, we'll be able to be, uh, to, to be to participate and to be part of the presentation by are answering some questions relating to this. Uh, is uh, a term and then a date, the theme, the topic, complete those. Remember, we must know which term were you in and which date, what was the theme and what was the uh, topic. The learning outcome, we have started the learning outcome for you so that you don't make a mistake. At the end of the, le the lesson, learners, uh, will be able to, why are we doing this? I'll explain in the next uh, slides. And then there's, we want to know lesson integration in grade R. In grade R, actually, they use a, a, a daily planner, weekly planner, daily planner, because the lessons are integrated. If a theme is about weather, from the weather, there would be a, a mathematic, mathematics lesson. There will be also a life skills. There will be a language. There will be a, a mathematics because it's integrated. It's not 
or you don't focus on only one subject, unlike when you, you go up with other grades. Learning outcomes should be measurable skills. What do I mean? You should be able to say at the end of this lesson, the learners will be able to, it must be a skill that can be measured. Learners should be able to um, stand on one leg or should be able to uh, uh, show how to do the washing or how to wash their hands because we are focusing on the lesson that you are teaching. It's not about what they are going to learn when they graduate at university. It's about that period of 25 minutes or 30 minutes. Just stick to that. Also, the abilities. What do you want them to do to show that they've mastered your lesson? The knowledge, the values that the learners should be able to demonstrate at the end of the lesson. I don't know how to emphasize this. That should, it should not be, they should be able to understand. They should be able to know. How do we measure that? It must be something that we can measure because if we say they should be able to wash their hands using soap or they should be able to demonstrate how to wash their hands, this is something that you see. It means in your conclusion, you are able to, you're going to, Ask them to do what you expect them to expect them to do uh, under the learning outcomes. So, you examples at the end of the lesson, learners should be able to count if it's mathematics. Should be able to differentiate, demonstrate, and identify. I hope you understand this. I will try to send also some short lessons or videos regarding this. What is integration? When we talk about integration, we recognize that. The subjects that are taught are interconnected. It is the interconnectedness of the knowledge and skills, and it seeks to nurture children's curiosity, creativity, and love for learning. When we grow up, from grew up, the less the, the the kind of lessons that we were taught, they were so isolated. There was no way you cannot we can connect mathematics to life skills, it was called biology by then. You just saw them as isolated subjects. There was not e even an integration into real life. You just saw mathematics at that, as, as such, that difficult subject with numbers that just blocks your head. But now things have changed. We need to integrate. They should see how it relates to other subjects, the learners. Cross is as a cross and key aspects of integration is a cross curricular curricular approach. It means we are breaking from the traditional barriers between subject areas. Exactly the example that I gave you. I never realized how mathematics links to language, how language links to life skills and all those things. There must be real world connections, connecting learning to real life context, especially in grade R. We know that a grade R is a play based a uh, 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 grade whereby your strategies should be play based. So they must connect what they are, you, you are teaching them with real life context. And also it can, it brings in, in inclusive practice. Teachers may differentiate instructions to meet the diverse needs of their learners, not students. Apologies for their learners. Uh, so the, here is how your templates, e, e, template is. That's the great R template. I haven't spoken about the other one. Introduction is a warm up. Then we have a main, main activity. We have a conclusion, which is a cool down. Then we have differentiation and resources. I'm going to explain some key points there. Um, if we're doing a daily, a daily program, like I said, the in grade R, they use a daily program where at the beginning it will be arrival and greetings and free play there'll be a morning ring maybe they might even talk about the birthdays creative activities it might be music and movement free play indoors or outside quiet play or story time that's the generic one for when you are do, we're in great unfortunately we know that the great art teachers cannot give you the whole classroom to run on your own. So we have chosen that out of the daily planner, you're going to pick up 
one subject that you're going to tell us about. Because even in real life, when you talk about in South Africa, I know I'm talking to also international students. In South Africa, let's say we are using caps, you'll find that uh, uh, the teacher, apart from the daily planner, the teacher has to also have their own uh, a manual where they have the lesson plan for each of the subjects, even though they are integrated. So if it's a, a lesson, maybe you are now talking about life skills or mathematics or language, you are now going to talk, you can, I'm giving you examples here, you are free to do any creative way you can do. It might be a song related to the subject, it, you must ignite also prior knowledge. We are saying we we are saying that the learners are not empty vessels. They come to the great art classroom knowing something. They already did sight reading, sight reading. They can see where it's written Coca Cola, Kentucky, or whatever the case may. Donald, they they already have something that they know. So whatever you're going to teach, just think about what is it that you can ask that relates to the new knowledge that they know from the real life. It might be games, but you, we can also explain, which is important, the purpose of the lesson. They are young grade R students. You can't say to them, today our learning outcomes. No, no, no. But you can say to them, today after doing the, the introduction, you can say to them, Today we are going to learn about this and that on connect or connect what they said about prior knowledge. You, you have told me the different sounds that you know. So today our lesson, we are going to expand your knowledge on sounds and you should be able to recognize those sounds and differenti differentiate uh, between different sounds. In that sentence, you have already given the purpose of the lesson. You have already given the assessment criteria, how you're going to assess them. Also be sure that the introduction is age appropriate. That's why I say you cannot talk to grade R like you'll talk to your grade 3. And then the, your, your, your templates also, also have a conclusion. In your conclusion, you, you can repeat what the lesson was about. In other words, you are recapping. You are saying, as we said at the beginning of the lesson, and I even asked you, you, you demonstrated the different sounds that you know. Today, now you have learned about this and this where it, when it relates to sounds. Uh, then you, are, you can say, now I'm going to ask you to do this and this and this. This is already your assessment criteria. So you have wrapped up the lesson. Now they know what you are intending to, to teach without even thinking about it, what has been done and what now you expect them to do and you make them do whatever you wanted them to do. Differentiation, um, it allows for repetition based on individual needs. Most of you, when it comes to differentiation, it seems to be some. It seems to be something that you don't understand well. What we are saying is that in a classroom, you've got learners with different learning abilities. Even in in your home, if you think about yourself and the, the your siblings, you don't have the same level of uh, uh, of understanding or the speed. So there are different abilities. We want to know in your classroom. We, it just means that when you pray, you, are, play, or you plan your lesson, you should be asking yourself, but at the end of the, le of the lesson, how would I make sure that I accom accommodate those learners that are fast learners, those that are average, those that need more time? And when we prepare, usually, usually we just pre uh, prepare for the average students. At the end of the day, you find that those that learn quicker are become troublesome in the classroom. Those that need more time are lost. So encourage peer support and collaboration. You can just set, say as an example, I'm going to make sure that I group learners who, uh, um, we, who, uh, who learn faster with those that need more time so that they can be able to help each other. Learners can work in pairs or small groups, exactly what I said, and they help each other. Remember that differentiation is about tailoring your instruction to meet the diverse needs of learners. 
Then when it comes to resources, in one sentence, explain what resources you used. You can say the resources that are going to be pasted here, I used them during the presentation and they improved my lesson because learners were able to see what I was talking about or I was able to accommodate uh, learners with a visionary learning style, whatever the case might be. Frequently asked questions, um, it's like uh, these are the questions that I get. Can I start with portfolio 50, 51 and then do portfolio 50 later? Sorry, I, I repeated. Response is always a, a, a advisable to start with lower grade. You are, your portfolio 50 will be having a lower grade, grade R and, and, and one. Then you then go to the higher grade. Um, yes, and then am I allowed to type my portfolio? Yes, you are allowed. Just make sure that you don't plagiarize because I've turned on the turn it in on the system. If there's anything that you got from the internet, it's going to pick it up. Uh, is it compulsory to be supervised? Yes, this year it's a yes, yes, and yes, because 30% of your overall mark is going to come from the assessment to where we include the supervisor report. Here is compulsory. We now have lecturers that I'm also, I'm also a supervisor. I don't mean that you should ask me to supervise you. We are going to be allocated students and we also have those that are contracted to UNISA. What if a supervisor does not contact me? I wrote this in bold letters. Take the initiative and inform the supervisor that you that you are starting your your your, 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 your school visit, and you need their supervision because if you don't do so, you might find that even the supervisor that they've given you, maybe they are sick or maybe they've passed away, whatever the case may be. But if you do that a week before you start or the week that you start, then the teacher you can contact teaching practice coordinator in your province they will allocate another supervisor. What constitutes pen penalties if you don't attach your register? You get a zero. If you do a wrong submission, you get a zero. You might reason as much as you can. We don't have access into the system. You use your own student number and load. And if you loaded a wrong one, just like in any exam, we won't mark it. Uh, don't, if we, we see fraudulent signatures, we are even policemen and, and investigators, we do investigate and that will make you fail. If there's no school stamp, you're going to fail. In complete dates, it should be a day, a month and a year. In conclusion, I'm going to say success is no accident. It is hard work, perseverance, learning, studying, sacrifice, and most of all, love of what you are doing or learning to do Bailey. We take it for granted that you chose to be a teacher because you love it. I wish you all the best. I'm here to support you. And I take you all seriously and with the respect, I expect to receive the same from you. Thank you.